everyone. Welcome to uh, Lit Litigation Help. Uh, my name is Heather Hoylitzman and joining me in this video is Heather Douglas. Hi, Heather. Hi. So today uh, we're going to talk about um, how to fill out the forms uh, for costs. So Heather, I understand that there are two different uh, forms that uh, one uses uh, something called Form 57, A or B? Yeah, correct. There are two forms, which I'll share with you in a moment. Mm -hmm. One of them we fill out at the end of a trial or, you know, at the end of a summary judgment motion. And the other one we fill out on a regular motion when you're giving cost submissions to the judge. So right now I'm on the Ontario Rules of Civil Procedure forms, and you'll see 57A and 57B. Mm -hmm. 57A is the bill of costs, and I'm going to open the first link. Okay. So if you see here, it says Course of Justice Act, bill of costs. Right. The general heading is where you would put the title of proceedings. And then you would keep the bill of costs underneath. And the amount claim for fees and disbursements, you would also keep on your bill of costs. Okay. At, beneath that, you would set out the items that you're claiming for in disbursements and in lawyer fees. So you can attach copies of your dockets or other evidence. Like if you say you spent 100 hours on something, or you can just simply point out the amount of time that was that went into the file. But you'll notice that it says tariff A. And currently the courts allow lawyers to submit a bill of costs for their hourly fees that aren't tied to the tariff. Many, many years ago under tariff A, the court set out what was acceptable amounts for disbursements like expert reports, what was acceptable for travel, what was acceptable for lawyer hourly fees. Right now, the courts use it more, the tariff A when it comes to lawyer fees, kind of like a, a guide, but they're not bound to it. So they have the discretion that if your hourly fee is $700 an hour, they can still take that into consideration and not look at the tariff. But whenever you're putting together your bill of costs, go into the rules of civil procedure and look at what the tariff sets out for certain amounts. And you'll get an idea of what's an allowable disbursement to put into your bill of costs. And here you would simply set out the amount of time um, that has gone into the file, but also what you've expended. For example, issuing a claim, defending, serving reports, what the expert reports cost, and Maybe you paid witnesses to come for, you had to summons witnesses, that can also go into there. And then lastly, you have a statement of experience. You're going to put the name of a lawyer and the years of experience. And if you have a law clerk or a paralegal that worked with you, then you would do that similarly beneath as well. And the last part is you would put, you usually would put your information and then you would also put two who the name of the address of a lawyer and the other part, or if it's a self-rep, then you just put their name and their address. And the bill of costs, we use that at the end of a trial or at the end of a dispositive motion. So that would be like a summary judgment motion or maybe a motion to strike a claim. Okay, so basically that means that if uh, that hearing well, our, our legal leases disposes uh, of a case. So that means a final, like a final decision has been made of the, of the, of the case. That's what you mean, I guess. Yeah, if it ends the, the case, if that ends the lawsuit, whatever happened, then you're going to go to the bill of costs. And it allows the judge the opportunity to look at how much time and money has gone into the file when they're assessing what amount to award against um, a certain party or for a certain party. So they're really trying to figure out how much money 
should I award a litigant in the proceeding? So they're gonna look at your bill of costs. And even if you're the loser, the judge still wants to see your bill of costs. Oh, because that's they want, Yeah, they want to know how much time you put into it. Because if the other side says they put in um, 800 hours and you put in, the losing party put in 100 hours, yeah. they might say, well, that 800 hours was unreasonable because maybe it only needed 100 hours. It, it's not always um, a guarantee that just because you put it in your bill of costs that the court is going to award that amount to you. That is really good to know because um, then that means that you should always prepare a bill of costs uh, regardless of whether um, you know, the person's the winner or the loser. Exactly, and then now we'll take us to the cost outline.